Geely, who own Volvo, have just released a new electric car which is priced from 12 to 15,000 US dollars. It's a similar size to a Toyota Corolla or a BYD Dolphin, the EA1, and it costs an absolute bargain. Now the thing is, considering this company is Geely, Volvo, there's a good chance we might see this electric car in all countries that sell Volvo. I mean, that's what the US, Australia, New Zealand, Europe, UK, Canada, pretty much everywhere. I've got to say, exciting times. Welcome to the channel. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. Hope you've had an amazing day. The new Geometry E has 400 kilometers of range, comes with an LFP battery, and starts at $12,000 US dollars. Seems pretty damn good to me. In addition, it's a small crossover kind of SUV type thing, and that's the kind of vehicle that people seem to love right now. This car is branded the Geometry E. And Geometry is an electric only car brand that Geely own and are planning on making it into a global electric car brand. Now this vehicle has, well, only a moderate 81 horsepower, but it's got enough torque. It's got more than 180 Newton meters of torque. And for a car this size, that's not too bad. Range in the base model specification is 320 kilometers. Top model, 401 kilometers. Price in China right now, 13,000 US dollars for the base model, 12.9, 15,000 US dollars for the top spec model. Now it's a kind of a curious looking vehicle, sort of like a jacked up hatchback. It's got a sloped roof line and quite a nice modern front, but I'm not sure about the dimensions in terms of its overall looks. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of the look of it. Now apparently this thing was originally called an X Thunder Tiger, and uh, Geely thought, nah, that's not going to quite work out. So we'll call it the Geometry E, just E for electric. Now, realistically, it's not actually a fully electric car. Yes, it is fully electric, but it's actually an electric car that's been built on an internal combustion engine platform. So that might bring some slight compromises potentially. However, I've got to say, it does look pretty good on the inside for a car of this price. I mean, you've got two 12 and a half inch screens there one right in front of the driver, one in the middle, and I like the way that they're designed. In fact, I like the whole interior, it's nice and simple, doesn't look too cheap, looks, I mean, for the price, looks pretty good. What's the boot size? Well, this vehicle's a really similar size, like I said before, to the BYD EA1 Dolphin, but this boot on this car is a little bit smaller. It's got a 300 liter boot, which is still bigger than a boot of, a, say, a Toyota Corolla, which is only 230 liters but smaller than say a Volkswagen Golf, which is around 380 liters. Here are the actual dimensions. It's 4,006 millimeters long or four meters long, 1,765 millimeters wide, and 1,550 millimeters high. So it's a little, tiny bit shorter than the BYD Dolphin, but it's a little bit higher. So you're gonna have a bit more headspace room in the back for passengers in the back, but leg room might be a little bit shorter. The wheelbase is almost exactly two and a half meters. And apparently this vehicle will actually come with a swappable battery in future, which is something that Chinese manufacturers, Chinese car brands have decided, you know what, Neo is right. We're gonna copy them. So lots of different Chinese electric car brands now are making their cars with swappable batteries, which is kind of a cool feature. I mean, you can drive into a battery swapping station within one to three minutes, depending on the brand, have your battery swapped over, you've got a brand new battery in there, fully charged, ready to go, and just drive away. That's pretty nice. And like I said, in China, that's becoming a common feature now. Speaking of batteries, there's two different versions, two different sizes. The smaller pack is 33.5 kilowatt hours. That gives the car 320 kilometers of range. The bigger pack is 39.5 kilowatt hours. That gives it 400 kilometers of range. Now, like I said, both packs, LFP, lithium ion phosphate. That's a good thing in my view, really good thing. You're probably gonna get, you know, a million kilometers minimum 
out of that battery pack, LFP batteries, that's one of the great things. You can charge them to 100%, not worry about de battery degradation. You can fast charge them, not worry about it. They're much more reliable than a lithium ternary pack. So in my view, you gotta have a choice of car. If you can choose a car with an LFP pack or a car without one, I personally would go with LFP for those reasons. So like I said, this car is really well priced. It's actually cheaper than a BYD Dolphin. In fact, it's cheaper than a Toyota Corolla with an internal combustion engine in the car. I mean, really, these are the kind of cars we're going to see more and more of in the West. That's what's exciting. For this kind of pricing, I mean, would you pay 20000 Australian dollars or 15000 US dollars for a car with this kind of range? Seriously, you'd have to say it's an absolute no-brainer. So let's say Geely says, well, we can sell these cars at our Volvo dealerships. We'll add 20% to the price. Even if they had 20% to the price, what price is it then? You're still looking at a 400-kilometer range small crossover vehicle for only 24,000 US dollars. Sorry, 24,000 Australian dollars or around 18,000 US dollars. And that is an absolute bargain. You know what? The future of electric cars is just looking better and better every day. Once again, the electric Viking is excited. Thank you for watching. Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.